special sister to come to the stage to talk to all of us and especially to our sisters. Um, Ustada Amina Blake uh, is a Muslim scholar with a master's degree in Islamic studies. She's got various postgraduate qualifications including MSc in leadership and management. Um, and she currently serves as a chaplain in the University of Sheffield, South Yorkshire Police, and lectures in Islamic studies at Markfield Institute of Higher Education and directs the EHUK Women's Refuge Project. Ustada teaches across the globe at courses and conferences as well as on social media and is a regular on Islam channel. Uh, Ustada has also served on several mosque boards over the past two decades and sat as Assistant Secretary General of the Muslim Council of Britain as well as sitting as an Islamic advisor on various platforms. She was given the Meekan Mosque Most Impactful Alama Award in 2022. Ustada Amina Blake, I request you to please come and talk to us. Ustada Amina Blake. الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين السلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I'm so honored الحمد لله to see so many familiar faces and so many new faces as well I'm here today to, to let us think about family and about homes because our homes are the heart of our lives, our families are at the hearts of our lives but they're constantly moving structures. People come and go, people are born and people return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. People marry, people divorce, people are sometimes happy and people are sometimes sad. Take a moment and just reflect on your home. What three emotions best describe your current home, your reality? Not your dream, we'll talk about that later. Your current reality of your home. The key to today's talk, inshallah ta'ala, is to try and fill our homes with sakina, with peace. But where do we find peace in our homes, in this crazy world? Do you want to know where to find your peaceful home? Yes or no? Yes. Yes, like three people said yes, ma'am. Do you want to know how to find your peaceful home? Yes. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Let's take the first principle from the Quran. Kalam Allah, the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, Wallahu ja'ala lakum min buyutikum sakana. This means it is Allah who made buyutikum your homes of rest, peacefulness, and quiet. But life is changing, right? Family structures are changing. But home, your home is made up of all the individuals that sit within it. All the individuals that live within your home make your home. And all of you bring something to your home, sometimes positive, sometimes negative, usually a bit of both. We all face, my dear brothers and sisters, some kind of family trauma at some point in our lives. Divorce, arguments, people struggling with mental health, connection with the Dean. We have our families that are divided, disrespect, neglect arguing and social media and the outside society bringing different sets of values into our homes. This is the reality. But there's another reality, my dear brothers and sisters. We cannot stop crisis in our lives. We cannot prevent trauma from hitting us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, tells us no disaster strikes anyone illa bi'ithnillah except by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And whosoever has faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yahdi qalbahum. 
He will guide their hearts. So we see a recipe here. Let's look at the context of these particular verses. At the time, the Rasulullah وسلم, and the Muslimin, they were going through home and family trauma like none of us have ever seen. They were in Mecca. There was torture. Families were ripped apart. And then they had to do hijrah, leave everything, leave their wealth, leave their loved ones, and travel to Medina on the hijrah. Trauma upon trauma upon trauma. When all is gone, when your house is gone, your home is gone, when your family has broken, when people are being killed and tortured, what are you left with, my dear brothers and sisters? You're left with two things. You're left with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you are left with yourself. So this is where we will begin. When there's a crisis, we tend to lose hope, we lose Iman, and then we blame society, or blame the media, or blame drugs, or blame the youth culture. We even sometimes question the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the basics is the self, the heart, and the nafs, and our connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah asks us in the Quran many times, be ya tafakkarun, be the ones who reflect, well, the ones who think about life. How do I react in a crisis? I want you to think and apply this to yourself. Not the self you wish you were, your real self. How do you react in your family crisis? Crisis is good for the self. If we approach it with faith, with trust, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised that he will guide our hearts to success. The incident or trauma we can't control. The response, my dear brothers and sisters, you can train your heart, you can train your nafs to control how you respond to your trauma. Now, with this strategy, let's look inside ourselves. The self becomes the source or the heart of Sakina. We become the place of rest in our homes with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helping us. So the outside world no longer affects us. The inner Sakina is what is important. I'm sure that all of you have met somebody in your life who you look at that person and you feel Sakina coming from them. You feel restful when you're with that person. We must make ourselves that person in our homes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, La ikrah fi deen, qad bainu rushtu bin al There is no compulsion in religion. And the right path becomes clear from the wrong. This is in Surah Al-Baqarah. Why am I using this particular verse? Because you have a choice. When you react to your home trauma, then you have a choice of how to react, and that is within you. This is thinking about muhasaba. Muhasaba, the way that we check ourselves. Is your emotional intelligence there? Are you aware of your own emotions and how to manage and control them? Do you step back and think before you respond to a trauma that's been presented to you by one of your family members? Why? Why should we step back? Because this earns the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And who doesn't want the love of Allah, right? Wallah, are you hibba sabirin? And Allah loves the sabirin. So do you recognize how your emotional outbursts or your emotional uh, way that you show your emotions, how does it affect your family members? How does it affect the people around you? Do you recognize the emotions of your family members and respond in an appropriate way? Emotion is a key foundation, my dear brothers and sisters, for making your houses and our houses the most peaceful place on earth. Because when you are at home, you are the real 
you. The real you comes out at home, right? Not the work you, not the masjid you, the pious you at the masjid, not the, the you at the college or the school or the university. Your real self comes out when you're in your place of comfort and your behavior is the true behavior of what your nafs is and what your heart is. The guard is down or the stress levels are up. Now, let's go back to that visualization, that dream. Visualize your home, your dream home, your ideal home. Think about three emotions that you would like to feel when you are in your ideal home. For you to come second there, your restful homes. The foundation of your restful home, first of all, is the marriage, the relationships within that home. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that the marriage is a strong covenant. In fact, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Mithaqan Ghaliba, he uses the same word to describe the marriage relationship, the marriage bond, as he uses to describe the promise of the Al-Anbiya, alayhim wassalam, the prophets, alayhim wassalam, and the promise that they made to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the covenant. This is how strong your marriages are. How do we honor that? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala introduces Sakina in Surah al -Rum. And he placed between you mawaddatan wa rahmah, affection and mercy. Rahmah. Wit and rahmah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here uses two of his attributes, two of his names to describe what the marriage should be like. Number one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al wudud. Al wudud, coming from the word wit. Wit is affection. When you love somebody, you show them affection. You do things for them, even the things that you don't really want to do. You make them happy because that makes Allah happy. And Rahman, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is the most merciful. And we have to show this mercy within our homes, within our marriages. Allah gives us these seeds, these two seeds, the affection, and the mercy, when we get married, when you have your nikah, this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala presents you with. Now what are you going to do with that? Are you going to grow these seeds? Are you going to nurture them? Are you going to put sunshine on them and water them and make them into beautiful forests? Or are you going to neglect them and be neglectful to your marriage? What will happen? The seeds of wit and the seeds of rahmah will die. And so the love and the affection in the marriage will die. Even in divorce, this good behavior continues. I know some of you here will be divorced or maybe going through divorces. But if you are going through this trauma, and indeed it is trauma, going through a divorce, remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, to do even the divorce, be ma'ruf, with the kindness, with the same mercy as in the marriage, we do the divorce. How many of us are dragging each other through courts, using the children as weapons and all the rest of this stuff that we do? That's our reality, my dear brothers and sisters. This is not the correct way. If we want to be truly following the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we do even the divorce, which is the greatest of trauma in our lives, be ma'ruf, in the kindness of ways. Regardless of how your home is made up, whether you're a single parent, or whether you're living with family, or whether you're married, or whether you're living with your children, or maybe you're living alone and go and visit your family members, each person in your household has a role. The Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the best of family members and he said a man is a shepherd of his family and is responsible for his flock. The woman is the shepherd of her husband's household and is responsible for her flock. Think about how the skills of a shepherd apply to your family. If you go start hitting the sheep 
The people who are under you, they're going to run away from you. And you're creating chaos, not Sakina. But if you treat people with beautiful kindness, bimaruf, even in the traumatic times, then you will draw people to your sense of Sakina, to your inner peace. Bimaruf, kindness, is a lived experience. And it's a culture we create within our households. We can do this also through our ibadah. The Rasulullah told us, do not make our homes like the qabr, like the graves. My dear brothers and sisters, be in your homes. We expect our kids to connect with us, our teenagers to connect with us, our teenagers to respect us, and not to say uff to us, yet we're absent. We're not there for them. We're not connecting with them. We're not giving them the best of examples. Some Bedouin people came to the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And they asked him, do you kiss and embrace your children? And he said, yes. And the Bedouin said, by Allah, we never kiss our children. We never embrace our children. The Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, what can I do if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taken away mercy from you? Mercy is at the center of everything. I'm going to leave you with some reflections to think and take with you into your homes. When your family home crisis hits, whether it's small, an arguing teenager for example, or somebody broke something, or it's large, somebody's sick, somebody passes away, respond well. Be the best of examples. When the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is in the Thawra cave, cave with Abu Bakr and he's there for three nights, imagine this, he's fleeing from the Quraysh who want to kill him and who want to kill Abu Bakr and the Quraysh suddenly they arrive at the mouth of the cave and Abu Bakr, Abu Bakr gets really scared and he sees the feet of the Quraysh in front of him. The Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is so emotionally intelligent, he feels this fear. He sees that Abu Bakr is scared. And instead of telling him to man up, and I know some people would say, man up, come on, get yourself sorted, yeah? Actually, he doesn't tell him this. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, la tahzan. This is a very beautiful, powerful thing. Do be, be not sad. Don't grieve. Indeed, Allah is with us. Remember this. This was so profound that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put it in the Quran. Read it, reflect on it, think about it. We end where we began. It is Allah who made your houses, your homes, homes of rest and quiet from you. With the self is where your Sakina begins. Whether you've got a house or you live in the street, the Sakina is within you to share and spread. And each member of your family has a responsibility for that. So I finish with a, a dua. Allahumma anta salam wa minka salam. Oh Allah, you are peace and all peace comes from you. Ya Rabbana, fill all our homes with peace. Ya Rabbana, fill our homes with your angels. Ya Rahman, fill our homes with mercy and sakina and guide our hearts to cope with trauma in the best of ways. Subhanaka lahumu wa bihamdika ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruk wa tuhu ilayk. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim wal asr. Inna al insana la fi khusr illa al ladina amanu wa amidu al salihat wa tawassaw bil haqq wa tawassaw bil sabr. Subhana rabbika rabbi la izzati amma yuhsifun wa salamun ala al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Jazakum Allah khair wa assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.
Jazakallah khair, Sister uh, Amina Malik, for your very insightful talk. Alhamdulillah, uh, we feel that the future of our Muslim community in the West is in good hands, especially when two out of our three main speakers are actually revers to Islam. And may Allah bring the time when two-thirds of these halls are filled with people who are revers to Islam as well.